Uncle Albert, do you know what today's video is about? Hell no! You never tell me anything. Well, <laughs> I'm telling you now. Today's video for our viewers is all about how to get better at painting in the shortest amount of time. Oh, that's easy. Easy, huh? Sure, you just steal a painting that's better than yours. Should be easy for you. Erase their name, sign your name, boom, done. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that is a shortcut. Uh, I think I've got a better way to do it. And uh, don't worry, buddy. I'll come visit you in prison. Ja. Hey, what? All righty. I have some fresh videos in the works for you, including today's video, which is the start of a series that features small paintings done quickly, just as if I were painting on location. But for now, I'm going to do these in my studio because I can control things much better, like lighting and surface glare. And you can actually see what I'm doing every step of the way. Now, eventually, I'll be doing some plein air paintings, and I'm going to show you my outdoor setup, what I found works best for me. Now, this is the painting that I'm going to be doing for you today. It's a six by eight, and it took me 30 minutes to do. Now, is this the best painting I've ever done? Well, no. Ha! You ain't kidding. Be nice. You want nice? It's in the dictionary between never and not gonna happen. Now, it's a backlit scene. With changing light on a scene like this, that's about the most time that you're gonna have on location before the light's gone. It changes quickly. I'm doing the painting in real time, so it hasn't been sped up. Future paintings in this series are, range from 6x8s to 8x10s to 9x12s. The larger the painting, the more time that I'll allot to do it. Now, you can get the photo that I'm using today in my photos folder link that I've put down in the description. There are no copyrights to worry about ever. And most of the photos that I've worked from to do my videos here on the channel, you'll find there. And you can paint to your heart's content. And real quick, before I get into this painting, I'm doing this series to drive home my point that in order to get better in the least amount of time, you should be doing a lot of small paintings quickly instead of large painting that has unlimited time. Small paintings have a number of benefits. First of all, it makes you distill the scene into a few elements. You have to make quick decisions, such as what's your focal point. It helps with your editing skills to have only the essential elements to support your focal point. What's the focal point? Well, usually it's the thing that drew you to the scene in the first place. And yes, simplifying is an important element to painting. Uh, it helps you paint accurate values, solid color choices, when and where to push the colors or hold back. Really, the benefits go on and on. So no more stalling. Ha! Too late! <laughs> Let's go. On these little paintings, I usually attach them using a blue tack to a solid board. And uh, I'm going to set my timer for some reason to an hour and a half, but it really, <laughs> I'm only going to paint for a half an hour. Since we're going to do this quickly, really this is kind of like, you know, in MASH where they called it meatball surgery. Well, this is meatball painting. So this is the, uh, the image I'm going to be working from, and I'm looking to kind of pick out a few things in order to get across uh, this scene without filling it up uh, too much. You know what? Let me just show you what my game plan is and how I plan on approaching this in the field. Well, getting into this. Okay, we're out in the field. We come across this scene. We want to paint back lighting, but holy moly, there is a lot of chaos here. Well, we need a focal point. And my focal point is going to be this tree trunk here, maybe at a branch or two. Uh, and, but all of this area surrounding it with the foliage, that's going to be our focal point. It's going to have the most contrast, the uh, brightest colors, and the most detail. And that's how you know it's the focal point. This area over here, this is a rock. It doesn't look like it now, and hopefully when we're done with it, it'll look more like a rock and less like something that came out of the south end of a cow. The next thing that I think is important for this composition is this branch here, uh, and we're going to bring it out. It's in the shadows, and but this whole 
section here. This is going to help to lead your eye around to where you want it to go. Now the ground plane is you know, somewhere around there. Uh, in the background, we're going to have a little bit of this scrub back here just to differentiate the, the different layers. And then we're going to make sure that we put in some of the background uh, elements like some of these trees. But not too much detail on that. Remember, we have a half an hour to get all this done. And so you don't want to be trying to get in there and noodle stuff that's not going to give you the effect you're looking for. Okay? Getting started on this, you can see that I've got my timer ready to go. Uh, I've got my reference there down in the lower right. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just lay this in pretty quickly. I have not started the timer yet. Why? <laughs> because I don't want to. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just throwing this in as quickly as I can. And I'll, I'll start the timer when I start painting. Uh, but this shouldn't take you any more than a couple of minutes. Hey, my painting, my rules. Think of this whole starting bit as uh, putting together your puzzle pieces. You know, an unequal distribution of size and shape. Remember, that's what I told you uh, good composition is. And that's what I try and do. I, I try and make sure that I don't have uh, too much of the same shape uh, going on. And... Uh, make them some areas larger some areas smaller and just keep that in the back of your mind when you're drawing this all in uh, I'm getting a pretty good idea as I'm drawing this in what I'm gonna leave out and what I'm gonna put in and emphasize So there we go. That entire drawing took me just under two minutes. And now I'm going to start in by um, massing things in with a thin down yellow ochre. Uh, the, the background color, as always, is a, uh, an acrylic yellow ochre that's been thinned down. But uh, going over the top of this, I think the better color to start with on the main uh, focal point is this yellow ochre. And it's basically all I'm doing here is trying to get as much of this canvas covered as quickly as possible. And normally, I, I won't put in the darkest part. In other words, uh, you know, that blue gray that I'm putting in back there, the blue purple, uh, that's not as dark as it could get to. Uh, I leave myself a little bit of room in order to be able to kind of work from the middle a little darker and then or a little bit brighter and I will uh, go in and cut in a little bit farther than what I think uh, I'm going to want to do see there I can go in and add a little bit darker areas there but um, you don't have to hit it exactly out of the park right away uh, as you're working on this it's thinned down just a little bit with some uh, terpenoid or some gamsol is really what I use but it's thinned down a little bit so that as you're working around your canvas, that terpenoid or gamsol will dry off pretty quickly. And so even though it's a little bit slippery uh, when you first put it down, as you're working around your, uh, your canvas, by the time you get back to it, it's going to be uh, easy enough to work on as long as you're not working too thickly. Uh, is that a word? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a word that Scott Adams would use in Dilbert, uh, Win Bigly. <laughs> as long as you're work, not working too thick, you know, just kind of get it in there and, and get it covered. And so that's why I'm working all over the, uh, the place on this. And remember, as you're putting things down, if you put something down, you know, kind of test it a little bit and see how you like it. But if you put it down and you realize, oh, that's really wrong, rather than trying to go slippery over the top of it, wipe it off. 
wipe it off and then you can start uh, over the top of that again a lot easier than trying to put a different color over it and uh, sliding it into uh, where you want it to be so don't be afraid to wipe things off if you find that they're going sideways on you uh, it's it's a pretty good uh, technique to have and it can be your friend uh, when uh, when things are going wrong which they will you can expect it just like death and taxes And I know it's going to be something that's a little bit hard for you to do when you get out uh, into the field or, you know, if you're working at home. Um, try not to judge your paint too quickly. What you're doing is you're just putting down uh, values that are in the ballpark uh, and keep those things separate. And uh, don't analyze every little mark that you put down. I actually have to remind myself of this. I have a saying taped to my easel as I'm painting that I look at every day that says don't judge your paint too quickly. You know, live with it for a little bit before you're sure that it's not quite right. Because our eyes, they can trick us and uh, you have to give it a little bit of time to adjust. Uh, you're just really trying to get your canvas covered at this point. Don't I don't even really pay attention to any of that. Just knowing that I'm going to go in and manipulate that paint once it's all down. But uh, putting it down, uh, one of the worst things that you can do is just start looking and say, oh, well, you know, that brush stroke isn't exactly right. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's not what this is about. Uh, really, you're trying to get a light effect. And uh, the faster you can get it down, especially something that's as fleeting as this backlit scene, uh, the better off you're going to be. So just work on getting it down. Know that you can wipe things off uh, if you don't feel like they're going well. Uh, and just keep moving. Just keep moving. Now, having said that, I do pay attention. Let's say if I'm putting in that the middle ground there or the, the ground plane, I try and keep my brush strokes in the direction that uh, something is growing. And so that ground plane, I want it uh, kind of vertical or a little bit uh, diagonal. I try and keep from being all over the place with the direction of my, of my strokes. I want to have a little bit of uh, control as far as knowing which way something is growing. And uh, if you're going in all different directions, uh, that way lies madness. So try and keep it from uh, being too much. A lot of this you'll notice that that I'll put in kind of vertically or I'll put in diagonally and then go in and, and kind of soften things up from there. But uh, as long as you're putting things in so that uh, you know, you're getting your general values in, uh, you're going to be able to go in and manipulate that a as you go along. But it's just important to, to know that um, you want to try and keep your brush strokes going in the direction that things are growing.
Okay, wakey wakey, nap time's over. Well, as you could tell, I started putting in uh, some of the lighter areas uh, on the focal point here. Keep it very simple. There's no details in there yet. We're just kind of getting that from uh, lighter colors down to the kind of the medium areas. As that backlit area uh, from the center goes towards the outside, it's catching more of the light, and so it gets brighter in color. Oh, 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 <laughs> it just occurred to me. Uh, a lot of you probably haven't seen my videos before. Uh, I get asked this question all the time. You know, what are the colors that are on your, your palette? And so I've done a one minute video that I'll link on top and in the description. You can go and watch that. And then you know all the colors that I'm using. And I don't, don't make everybody sit through that again. Okay. Now that everything is covered, this is the time for me to go in and define things, adding details, and just basically fleshing out what's already there. Uh, if something's a little bit too bright or too dark in the background, uh, I address it now. And uh, this is the time that I start being concerned with how the paint is going to look and making sure that my eye is going to be drawn to that focal point of that vertical tree in the center and all of those wonderful backlit leaves. This is also the time that I go in and I adjust values. So um, remember how I said don't worry too much, you just need to be in the ballpark. Well, now's the time that I'm gonna go in and uh, darken up some of those uh, leaves that are on the right-hand side that, uh, that were too light. And then I'm gonna add some color there in the background like I am. Just basically, I want to try and manipulate where your eye's gonna go and uh, it's easy now to see that once all of the canvas has been covered. And I, I should say that this is also the time where I, I, I'm not using any thinner at all. I'm not using any Gamsol. This is just straight paint out of the tube uh, that's been mixed to the color that I want. Now I'm able to go over the top of uh, that thin down paint. It's had a little bit of time to set up and uh, I'm not putting the paint on real thick right now, but I'm putting it on definitely thicker than it was before. And then for the areas that I want to um, really pop off, you know, the, the lighter areas, those are gonna be thicker uh, paint yet. So try and pay attention to your, uh, the consistency of your paint. Once you understand how it works for you, you're going to be able to go in and uh, and paint over the top. I know a lot of people have a problem with being able to, once they have something down, it gets real slick. Uh, a lot of this has to do with just lightly using your brush. Don't try and slam it in there because you're going to pick up what's beneath it. Just have a light touch and let your brush do the work. You don't have to, uh, you know, this... <laughs> This is not a big bear. You don't have to wrestle it to the ground. Uh, you want to use the brush and let it do what it does best, and that's to make marks. I mean, it's basically a stick with hair on it, and there's a reason that people have used it all these years is because it actually does a pretty good job if you use it the way it's intended to be used. So a very light touch is all you're going to need in order to manipulate your paint to get it to do what you want it to do. If it doesn't, wipe it off and try again. It's just that simple. So pretty much it took me 10 minutes to get to this covered completely. Uh, and so in my four stages of painting, which I uh, have labeled crap, uh, the first one is to cover and cover your canvas. That's been done. Refine and adjust, uh, which is what I'm doing now. And the last stage will be the finish. Uh, and so that would be <laughs> the, the pH uh, in crap. So um, right now we're just refining things. We're adjusting them so that uh, we have the, the values that we want and where we want them. And then uh, as I get that done, you'll see that I start adding in uh, some details. And that's the finishing part of it.
To the river To the river we go Leave our worries on the shore and drift away On the river On the river we know Sometimes the perfect words are never said I spilled my coffee, I don't feel like talking My worries just keep growing by the day I need a moment where the green and blue appear To spin a rock and watch the ricochet To the river To the river we go Leave our worries on the shore and drift away On the river On the river we know Sometimes the perfect words are left unsaid You could change your mind When you're intertwined with the water and the waves The doctor gave And with that old fishing pole I still catch them by the bucket full The kids are helping on the grill And sneak a taste To the river To the river we go Leave our worries on the shore And drift away On the river Sometimes the perfect words are never said You could change your mind When you're intertwined with the water and the waves find this place before you end your days and if you see me out there wave hello now when i opened up this video i was telling you that um, if you want to get better at painting faster the way to do it is not to do big paintings uh, that take you months or weeks or years to do the best way is to do a lot of little paintings so that you, uh, you're not locked into one thing and you don't have unlimited amount of time to work on it. These smaller paintings are going to solidify in your brain exactly how to work with the paint and what works and what doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, then you haven't invested a whole lot of time. You can move on to the next one and what you've done um, incorrectly is is uh, foremost in your mind you don't have to try and remember you know you've just come off that painting so uh, really I can't emphasize it enough do a lot of small paintings I've got several of them that are already in the can that I'm gonna be uh, playing for you this will be a series on uh, doing quick paintings and we'll we're, we're gonna go from these little six by eights to an eight by ten to a nine by twelve and you just work your way up uh, as far as size goes. And when you do that, uh, once you've got the 6x8s uh, under your belt, the 8x10s, the 9x12s are going to be a lot easier for you. So if you find that you like um, the concept of this, stick around. Uh, <laughs> and here's my pitch for you. If you like what you see, uh, share it with your friends. And uh, maybe they'll get a kick out of it. Uh, if you don't have any friends, uh, hit the like button. 
<laughs> subscribe, and all of us here will be your friends. And uh, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff that every single YouTuber tells you. Uh, because it really does help the channel. And after all, what's more important than helping the channel? So as we're coming down to home stretch here, this is the time for you to slow down a little bit, step back more often. It's kind of important that you do that the entire time that you're working because you know, you're right on top of it. But step back, see what edges need to be softened, uh, see what uh, extraneous details are in there that you don't need and see where you could use, uh, you know, use some things like extra branches, things like that. Um, just take your time and uh, put down your sledgehammer now and uh, pick up your scalpel. This really is your time to fine tune uh, what you've orchestrated here and put things where you want them to be. Not so much uh, the tiny little details, we'll get to that uh, at the very end, but the things that, uh, that you had in your mind that maybe aren't working quite as well as, as you want them to be. Believe me, now that the timer has hit uh, you know, the zero hour, your mind is racing and you're really trying to get everything in there uh, before that light changes. And this is the time where it's just straight paint. There's no thinner uh, and you're putting it on uh, a bit thicker now, especially since you're doing the highlights. Those should always be put on the thickest. Coming down into the finish line here, go ahead and, uh, and stop it. Now, I'm going to do some detailing. It takes me five minutes. And I can do this at the end because I don't need the, uh, the image anymore. I don't, even if I'm standing there and the light is gone, I can do this because all I'm doing is adjusting things a little bit. Uh, that I feel like need to have a little more detail, whether it's the branches or some extra leaves there. This is stuff that uh, that you can do at the very end. It'll really make your painting look like it's it's finished. Uh, up until now, uh, it's been just the, the bare essentials. So we'll put a few uh, lights in along the tree trunks to make it look like the light is catching in a couple of places. Maybe a couple little darks here and there. And uh, really, that's that's about it. Now, when you get back to the studio, if you're painting this on location, uh, generally, I don't look at what I did that day. I'll wait until the next morning uh, because you have a fresh eye. Sometimes you're pleasantly surprised. Sometimes you remember it exactly the way it is. And sometimes uh, it's just horrid. <laughs> And you're disappointed, but you know that's that's the way it goes when you're painting out uh, on location. You uh, your eye gets a little bit stale as you're standing there and looking at it. This is your time before it completely dries to go in uh, the next morning and go ahead and uh, do any adjusting that you want to do. And so you know the purists will say no, you can't touch it once it gets into the studio. But you know my painting, my rules. So uh, I like to, uh, to touch something up before it bothers me and I release it, uh, if it if it does go out. Now usually I use these just for learning. And uh, here is the final painting once I've done all the touch up on it. Uh, like I said, not the best painting I've ever done, but you learn so much from doing these. So I really encourage you to get out there or uh, start small, give yourself a time limit, and to see what you can do and look back in a month after you've painted i really think you'll be pleasantly surprised by your progress thanks for watching you can follow me on facebook or instagram or visit my website and as always i'll see you down the road